and this is a John Wonk with Yehuda, with Michael, with Sidi Nur, and Thomas. Um, so I'm going to talk about oblivious transfer, ex uh, oblivious transfer extension. As you all know, um, I've started with the importance of this uh, protocol. So you heard already about it in Benny's talk at Sunday, in Yudas talk at Monday, in Claudia's talk at Tuesday. And you're going to, to hear about it again today. So this, uh, you, this is important. Um, so in this talk, what we're going to talk about is concrete efficiency in the malicious model. Um, and I'm going to present the most efficient OT extension protocol in a malicious model yet. It's an optimized protocol. I'm going to show some proofs, and we have also implementations. So what is OT? We all know. Just get used to the colors, um, and that uh, we, we denote the, the input of the receiver <coughs> as R. So OT is a busy, uh, basic ingredient in almost all protocols for secure computation. If we, we follow the, the approach of uh, basing of protocols that uses garbled circuits, we have at least one OT per input, usually input bit. And if we follow protocols that based on GMW, we have at least one OT per end gate, usually even much more than one OT. Um, which means that in protocols for secure computation, we have many, many OTs. How many? Just to get uh, some numbers. So the EAS circuit, which is kind of a common benchmark for, for, uh, for protocols, they, we need something like two to the 19 OTs, which is roughly half a million of OTs. If you want to, to uh, run the PSI circuit, which is the sort compare shuffle, we need to use something like 2 to the 30 of these, which is 1 billion. Uh, using PVW, which is the most efficient protocol for OT, not extending OT, but pure OT, we can, on startup PC, we can perform something like 350 OTs per second which means that if we start to run one million OTs now, it will take us something like 45 minutes, which is roughly until the next coffee break. And if we want to run one billion of OTs, then it will take us more than one month. Okay, so we need something more efficient. For, for this, we have the OT extensions. And the OT extensions, we have some small amount of base OTs. How small? It's something like security parameter plus some cheap crypto, private key crypto. And we get together many of these. This is like hybrid encryption, where public key is expensive. So what we do, we send the private symmetric key and work in the symmetric private key. So OT extension was uh, introduced in Beaver 96, and uh, Shai, Kilian, Nissim, and Petonak showed a very efficient protocol, both in the semi-honest and in the malicious, for oblivious transfer. And you saw this protocol three times this week. Um, we have some optimizations in the semi-honest model and optimizations in malicious that are somewhat that optimizes this protocol. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to talk a little bit about the IKNP protocol. I'm not getting much into detail since you all saw this three times this week. Uh, I'm going to talk about our protocol and performance of our protocol. So I'm starting with extending OT efficiently. Focus for now on the semi-honest still. So the idea of IKNP protocol is as following. Doing many OTs is expensive. Even for short messages, even for one bit, it's expensive. But on the other way, on the other end, if we do few, few OTs, 
of long messages, this is cheap. So this is expensive, this is cheap. So the idea of IKNP is that instead of doing many OTs, we can do some few OTs, but we're going to do it very, very in a clever way that will enable us to have some coordination, some correlation of keys, and we're going to take the, the columns of these few OTs together and perform many, many OTs using private key. Going to do it in a clever, if once we do it in a clever way, we can, we can make many OTs. Um, and essentially, this is, this is the protocol. I mean, you can see it like two, as two round protocol when we have the first one is OT, is an is invocation of an OT oracle. And in the other one, in the other one, the second round, we have the transfer of the OTs. So it's, that's it, that's the protocol, OT and then transfer. In practice, what we do, instead of doing OTs for long messages, we break that and we do some OT for completely random messages. Then we kind of correct this OT using some as, as a transmission of long messages. And this together we get many of these. When it comes to practice, we even do not, um, we break these long messages and send only few. This is because when we come to turn our head, we don't want to get the neck. Okay? So we do it slowly. And we can do it in parallel and stuff like that. We have an optimization of this protocol in a, in a paper two years ago. And you can download and run it in, in SCAPI, which you is going to talk about later today. OK, so the IKNP protocol, at least the, the messages of the rounds that we have, so we have three rounds. The first is base of T's where we do flip between, change the world between the sender and the receiver. And here, the sender is now the receiver in the overall protocol. It chooses pairs of keys. And the, the Alice chooses a secret S. After the base of T's, she gets the responding keys, corresponding keys. The next step, we send those long messages, we, we, we get those two matrices, Q, T and Q, while, and then at the last round, we have the transmission, the transfer itself. OK, so I put the two stars here. The first one, I want to, to address that here, we have a use of the receiver inputs. OK, this is, I mean, in this, in this basal T's, Everything is random. It's independent of the actual inputs. Here we do use the, the, the input of the receiver. And here, the sender uses its input. So now we want to use this protocol. I didn't get into the details how T and Q are defined, but you saw it already. When we come to remove to the malicious, we first figure out that the protocol is already secure with respect to malicious adversary. And why is that? Well, this is because um, when the sender send, sends his uh, messages, the, the hashes are well formed, and therefore on every input is used only once. And it's like we have a... Um, Whenever you change this message, message is like input substitution, which is allowed by the malicious, malicious adversary. On the other end, a malicious server may send inconsistent R with each UI message. I mean, here, it uses its input again and again with each message. We have many, many messages when it uses the same input. Now we need to check that in, you always send the same R. In general, by sending inconsistent R, it may learn some bits of the secret S. Once it learns bits of S, it can actually recover and learn all the messages of the sender. 
So we need to add some consistency check of R, uh, and we need to check that each UI, um, each UI uh, defines the same R. Uh. So if we add the protocol, all we add to the semi-honest protocol is one round of consistency check of the message R. So now I'm going to the actual details, how we perform this consistency, consistency checks. So if we look at the messages that the receiver needs to send, these are UI, which are the source of the strengthening, the stretching of, of the keys that he used to the oblivious transfer to the basal keys, XO by R. Now for the representation, I'm going to change. I'm, to use the representation, I'm going to change. Instead of writing GK of I, I will write TI0 and TJ0 and TI1, TJ0 TJ and TJ1. Now, we want to check that the R is the same. And what we need to, sh what, we sh what we see is once we just take two messages that do have the same R and XOR them together, the R disappears, and what we get is the UI XOR use J is just the XOR of all the keys that were inputs to the base OTs. This means, now recall that the sender has only one key, one blue, and one, one red, so it means that if it XORs all the information that he has, he gets the XO of the remaining keys. However, it doesn't have these values. These values were input to the base of T's, but he didn't receive them. In addition, in addition, we cannot send him these values, because once we send him these values, he learns everything about S. He learn everything about R. So what we do, we cannot send him these values, but we can send him a hash function of these values or one-way function on these values. Okay, so this is the idea of, of the consistency checks. We just the 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 receiver sends for each pair all the ashes of all these for for every pair of uh, i and j. He sends ashes of all the pairs of keys. He sends them together with the UI and the and Alice. What she does, she just check that on SI and SJ the keys are correct, and for 1 minus SI, 1 minus SJ, the keys, if you take UI, UJ, XO with the two keys, you get a, what you should have sent on 1 minus SI, 1 minus SJ. Claudia? For, for now. Okay? So does it really work? So let's see. Um, our goal is whenever you send R and RJ, which are not the same, which are, you send UI and UJ that define R and, R and RJ that are inconsistent, we want, that, we want to catch the adversary. Namely, if you send UI and UJ that do not define the same R, we want that the checks will catch the adversary. But the receiver may send hashes that are not really correct. Namely, you can send for 0, 0 the correct hash, for 0, 1 the correct hash. For, for 1, 1, you may send something that will make the verification pass. I mean, UI, XO, y, UJ, XO with TJ, should be zero and zero, okay? And this together are gonna be, uh, the verification will pass. Um, so does it work? I mean, will the verification pass? The question is, what are the two bits that the sender has chosen? If it's chosen as zero, as a zero, then the verification is gonna pass because it checks he has the keys TI0, TJ0, and he has going to perform these checks, and these checks are correct. On the other hand, if he chooses SI1, then the verification will fail and will catch the adversary. Okay? 
So these are good news and bad news. Good news that we catch the adversary, but only for the correct uh, choices of S. In, in particular, what it means that the adversary, if he wants to cheat in, in, in this uh, selling of ashes, then it must guess what S is and send hashes that will fit uh, S because S it doesn't know S. The only thing that they can do is like guessing what S is. S is. So in general, we get that if Ri and Rj are not consistent, then it must be that if the verification passes for some choice of Si and Sj, then it must fail, it must fail for the other pair, I mean for the complement. And therefore, the adversary can succeed only with probability one half with each check once Ri and Rj are inconsistent. Okay? Because in two out of four possibilities, it may pass the verification. In the two others, it cannot. So what we get that Bob can still learn some t bits of s, but with probability only 2 to the minus t. And also, by guessing si, another problem that we, we may have, that by guessing si, it can pass the verification not only for a pair ij, but i with all other j's. Okay. So it means that we don't have independency between two checks. One i is the same one once, once the adversary guesses the correctest i. So the solution is just to increase a little bit the, the, the amount of base OTs that we perform. Instead of have, of have k, or k, which is a security parameter OTs, we're going to have k plus the statistical security parameter, which means that in, in, in general, with probability 1 minus 2 to the minus statistical security parameter, which is something like falling, the adverse still k bits of s are completely hidden, and the adversary has no information about them. So essentially, because you put a correct number of checks, you never have that errors can cancel out. That's correct. So I mean, if there is an error, you always avoid it. You never have this thing where you know, there are two which are both wrong, but they cancel out and then, is that true? No, I didn't understand that. Oh. Okay. So some concrete numbers, if we have typical security parameters, something like 128, statist the statistical parameter is 40, so we have number of base of t's is, is something like 168. Uh, in NNOB, we had 8 over 3. Uh, the, the security parameter, which is 341. But we check all pairs, which means that we have, if we take 168, we have many, many, many checks. It's 14,000 checks. So we, are, we want to re reduce this amount of number, number of checks. So how many checks do we really need in our protocol? So let's represent what we have as a graph. Each UI message defines some RI. We, 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 we just write all the vertices are all the RIs. And every edge represents a check that we have. Now, whenever it sends messages that are uh, consistent, are consistent, so we, we, we change the label of the vertex to be R, and we may have some bad, bad uh, vertices uh, which are inconsistent with R. Now, effectively, although we have many, many checks, once it guesses the correct S, then all the checks that it may have for one, one vertex, although it has many out edges, we catch him only with probability one half because once it guesses correctly this SI, then it, it, it passes all the verification of all the checks of all the other edges, vertices. So effectively, although we have many, many checks, in this case, we have only three checks that are independent. So when we may, <coughs> may um, catch the adversary, and therefore, 
as we see, the number of effective checks is much lower than the number of checks that we perform. As a result, we want maybe a much, much sparser graph. Okay? So I want to address what property we need from that graph. We need that for any large enough of bed vertices, when we have too many inconsistent, inconsistent R's, we want to have enough out edges with good vertices, and in particular, we want to have a matching with good vertices, and the size of the matching is tr should be something like the statistical security parameter, okay? Something like 40. So we may increase a little bit the amount of OTs, at, uh, in order to get the full pr uh, high probability that we will have um, a P matching. So random graph seems to satisfy this property, random D regular graph. Uh, for instance, in this random graph, you have these three, let's say, inconsistent edges, uh, vertices, and although we have many less checks, we do. Uh, we still have some. Uh, we we still catch the adversary. We have a matching with the blue edges, blue vertices. So how many checks do we need? So again, the needed property is that for any large enough bed vertices, we have a matching with the blue. Uh, we showed that the random D regular graph satisfies the above for appropriate set of parameters. In particular, here we, 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 we work very, uh, we want to do very tight analysis because once you add the degree too much, you're going to pay a lot in, uh, in the number of checks. So we showed that for 190 OTs, two out edges for every, for every felt is, is enough. You're going to have a matching, a, a faulty matching, with probability, one overwhelming probability. So the number of checks is only 380. For if you reduce the number of base of T's, then you may have a larger degree, and we, are, we pay this amount of checks. OK, so we showed that um, we don't have to perform many, many checks. We also have a variant for covert security, and we showed the probability one half to get probability one half of security. All you need is just random seven edges, and that's it. So it's essentially the same Ionos protocol when you just flip, ch uh, change the OT to be malicious, the base OT is plus additional seven checks. What? No, it sends what it's like sending what it wants, what uh, the graph that it wants to uh, to uh, it queries, you know, challenges, give me these edges, and res it responds. So the, the graph has to be sent after the receiver sends it. Right? I mean, it's not like it's fixed ahead of time. This, uh, yeah, it's it's like a challenging. Uh, because obviously, otherwise you can. Yeah. And so I think it's not not much more than uh, K plus something, some parameter of the security statistical security parameter. K plus something multiply of the statistical. So about the hash functions, we showed that if uh, we need. Slight stronger assumption, but it seems like the same. We have in, in the IKNV protocol, we need correlation robustness, where we have many, um, we, we use the same secret to, uh, in the ashes. Now, what we need is a K mean entropy correlation robustness, where instead of S getting uniform as in correlation robustness, is when here S is taken from a source which has high enough to entropy, it has minimum, ent minimum entropy of k, in particular, a random uniform distribution over k is a k-mean entropy. 
songs. Okay, I'm going to talk about the performance. So we did an empirical evaluation of this protocol. And our benchmark for now, for the following, is 8 million of OTs. So we check also a land's local scenario when the two servers say, sit in the same room, and one other, which is a cloud scenario, where the two servers sit in different, <coughs> and very, very far away. And it turns out that we need different parameters. Sometimes the base of this um, cost more than the, than the checks, and sometimes in some scenarios, it's different. So in order to evaluate 8 million of OTs, in land scenario, we need something like 12 seconds. That's it. And in the one scenario, we have six, uh, um, about a minute. OK. So a uh, comparison in the land setting, these values here. We, is two to the 26 of this. This graph is, um, shows that the passive security we get something like 72 seconds. Our work for the covert is 80 seconds. Going to active, you add seven more seconds. NLB is 123. This is in the large setting. When we got to the one setting, wide area networks. Again, to the 26, the passive security, our wall is somewhere here, and on the is here. Now, this graph is logarithmic scale, OK? So we've got the differences. seems like they are not so different. It's get bigger and bigger. It's 1, 10, 1, on one. So conclusions. We know that more efficient OT extension, you get more efficient protocols. So it's really very important primitive. And this is a really nice combination of theory and practice. Thank you.